Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy, Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. I mean, seriously, it does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. There we go. How are we doing today on this Tuesday? Let me first give a shout out to everybody that came in on our live stream last night. We had a ball as always. Um, you know, we have, of course, the usual Texans troll. Uh, we're not going to mention his name. And of course, all the Eagle ones that just love to hate me. Come on now. You Eagle fans, now I know you come in with a lot of venom and stuff, but you know you really love being here. You know you love being here. Just go ahead and it's okay. Come on out the closet and just admit it. I'm a fan of the Joe Boo Sports Report. I don't like the Dallas Cowboys, but I love being here. It's okay. We got it. We understand. Your family, you know, that family that you don't, that the kid's too close to, but your family. So, um, NFL is exploring um, teams, some teams are exploring, have moving training camp. I doubt we'll see the Cowboys go to Oxnard. Um, I just don't see that happening because uh, if we're talking about the season going off in time, July, more than likely, that is just not going to be a situation. And if they do go to Oxnard, you won't have fans there as well. I, I doubt it. Don't, don't quote me. But you're having states like, for example, um, Seattle right now, they're saying two months from now, that gatherings of more than 50 people probably still won't be allowed. And so some of the teams are looking for places to move their training camp where there's less of the virus and things like that, so that way they can get together and practice. Uh, Dr. Fauci was talking about um, basically you're going to have to test players twice a week or so and night before games and things to make sure that nobody has it. And if somebody tests positive for it, then you're going to have to sit out and possibly if more than a couple, then maybe the whole team has to sit out. So it, it's a whole lot of unknowns and things that are going to have to happen. Um, hopefully we can come up with a quicker test and hopefully we can come up with a, uh, you know, a vaccine or something that will help to mitigate this, not only for sports, but for all of us, because we all want to get out the house. We want to get out the house. We want to get we want to get back to work. I mean, let, let's let's be honest. So it's not just for football; it's for all of us. So, um, taking a look at right now, uh, the first wave of free agency is over with. The draft is over with. Um, you're going to see more players that are going to be cut this month and things as teams look and say, "We got this guy in the draft." So there's going to be that second wave of free agency that's going to be out there where you can still find. Some players, you know, you kick the tires on them. Some players that'll be better than what you may have. And the Dallas Cowboys, they've been working a lot. So I wanted to slow down for a minute today and just take a look at where we are currently. Okay? So I'm going through with uh, Bleacher Reports. They have a, a ranking for all the teams on how their offseason was. And I just want to go through what they had to say and compare it to my own thoughts. Okay? The Dallas Cowboys, free agency tra uh, tracker, they give us a C plus. The draft, they give us an A. So they give us a B overall, a B. Okay. This early uh, offseason was interesting time for the Dallas Cowboys. They were unable to reach a long-term deal extension for, for quarterback uh, Dak Prescott. They still got till July 15th, uh, uh, FYI. And lost number one cornerback Byron Jones. I'm not sure that they really wanted to keep Byron Jones because technically they had the money to do it. We still had the money to hold on to him if we had wanted to work out a deal. Just saying. Um, I think that they were looking at going in another direction, but we'll go on. Um, they did franchise tag Prescott, and they locked up wide out Amari Cooper to a five-year deal. Now, keep in mind, that deal really only cost them $12 million this year. So they actually ended up reducing his cap number from last year to this year, and the Redskins were willing to pay him even more than what we were, but he wanted to be here. So that, to me, is an incentive that a guy took less money to stay someplace. That means he's tied to it emotionally. But let me go on. They lost edge rusher Robert Quinn, but added um, defensive tackle Don Terry Poe, safety haha -Ha Clinton Dix, defensive tackle Jeremy McCoy. The Cowboys re-signed Sean Lee and center Joan Looney, while adding offensive lineman Cameron Irving and quarterback Andy Dalton. The last two additions were strong insurance, giving 
uh, the retirement of Travis Frederick and uncertainty surrounding Prescott's contract status. Um, in the draft, the Cowboys polarized value over need and ended up adding some potential franchise cornerstones in Oklahoma wideout CeeDee Lamb, who the Eagles wanted, and former Alabama cover uh, Trayvon Diggs. Lamb was considered to be among the best receivers in the draft. His roots will need to be Come more efficient and crisp to beat man-to-man covers in the NFL, um, size and speed. But his ball skills and explosiveness with the ball in his hands should allow teams to scheme him into explosive opportunities right away. Um, Prescott future in Dallas remains a sizable question mark, but the Cowboys have have done enough in the NFC East title race, even choose even if he chooses to hold out. So they give us a B. Hmm, interesting. A B. I want to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles because, uh, you know, anything can happen. Teams can go from worst to first and often have. The Eagles went from the basement to the penthouse being fourth place in the division and winning the Super Bowl the next year. That happens. I think the Redskins are going to be better with Ron Rivera. I think Ron Rivera is a much better coach <laughs> than, than Howdy Doody. Um, the Giants, I still think the Giants are a mess. I don't think that they're going to be, I mean, they should be better than they were. I mean, they've got some good pieces. Daniel Jones will be better than what he was. You know, Barkley, if he can stay healthy, that helps. But they still got a long ways to go. But I, they couldn't prove. They couldn't prove. Um, but I look at it as the Eagles and the Cowboys. Both teams have more talent than the other two. Let's just face it. They've got more talent. And now, I dare say, better coaching. But we'll, we'll, that remains to be seen. Um, one other thing they didn't put in the off season there um, that I think that they should have put in for our Cowboys is the fact that we have actually moved on from Jason Garrett and crew. That we'll have a new philosophy on offense and defense. You can already see that sea change in the type of defensive linemen that we've gotten. We've gotten bigger on the defensive line as opposed to guys that are just fast. You can see that they're going to be doing more of a 3-4 defense instead of a 4-3 because they looked at it, the, the, the running, stopping the run was an issue for the Dallas Cowboys. And you can see that they've tried to counter that with the type of players. So that's where you look at Byron Jones. Yeah, Byron Jones was a good corner, but was he fitting what they want to do as a defense? And so that's where they made that calculated risk and say, let's get Diggs, who is a ball-hawking type of quarterback. But we'll see. We'll see. You know, only time will tell. Philadelphia Eagles. Let's go and see what they have to say about the Eagles. Free agency. Now, the Cowboys, we got a C. The Eagles get a B plus. Hmm. And in the draft, they get a B plus. Okay. So let's read what they have to say about the Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles are going to miss having Malcolm Jenkins to safety. But they help balance out the talent level by trading for a legitimate number one quarter in Darius Slay. They also helped migrate the loss of Jenkins by re-signing Jalen Mills and Ronald McGloyd while adding Will Parks and uh, Nicole Rodney Coleman. Philadelphia also resigned uh, backup quarterback Nate Stutzfeld, a prudent move given Carson Wentz's injury history. The Eagles doubled down on Wentz's insurance, grabbing former Oklahoma quarterback Jalen Hurts in round two. However, he will be more of a, val more of a value than your typical reserve quarterback. Will he? The Eagles plan on using him as an offensive weapon as well. Tyson Hill package on steroids, one source told Yahoo Sports. Okay. The round before Hurts, Philadelphia selected former TCU wideout uh, Jalen Ragar. Uh, who should immediately improve, uh, provide a boost to the Philadelphia receiving courts, which struggled with depth at the end of 2019. Philadelphia added uh, defensive depth later in the draft, grabbing former Colorado linebacker Devin Taylor and former Clemson defensive back uh, Kevin Wallace. Expect, expect the Eagles again to contend for the NFC East title. They set themselves up to be competitive um, as last year at a minimum. So, interesting. Interesting. Their draft, they gave them a B plus, and the free agency, they gave them a B plus as well, and they gave them a better grade than the Dallas Cowboys overall. And I'm curious how you guys see it. Is this how you guys feel, or do you look at this as they are shining the Eagles shit 
because to me that kind of seems like they're kind of shining a bit. Darius Slay is a good corner, but I'm not sure that he's a shutdown corner that he's been made out to be. When you look at the NFC North, um, some of those years that were good years were years that Aaron Rodgers was injured. Uh, you had Kirk Cousins' his first year along with uh, Case Keenum that he was playing against. And then you had Mitch Trubisky. It wasn't exactly like you're playing in the NFC South where you've got quarterbacks galore. You know, it, it, that, that kind of tends to shade things just a little, just a little bit. But but we'll have to wait and see on that. Malcolm Jenkins, I think, is going to be a huge loss for that defense. And also, too, uh, Jason Peters may end up being gone. They're, I know they're talking about bringing him back. But I don't know that the Eagles got that much better this offseason than they did more than just maintain or maybe come back down to earth a little bit. I, I'm just, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, you know, what happens. All this stuff is up for debate. You know, last year when we signed Randall Cobb and Robert Quinn, people just said, those are terrible moves. They're nobodies. They're past their prime. They're too old. But yet those two guys played well enough to get big fat contracts and actually played better than some of the people we already had on the team. So, you know, take this as you will. Nobody really knows what anybody is going to do. So hopefully we'll have a season and find out what's going to be what and who's going to be who. So with that being said, I'm going to get ready to get back to the uh, workshop. i got a lot of racks of stuff to do. We're doing some changes in there. i got a new exhaust fan in there that will help to keep some of the dust down, help keep Mama happy so the dust won't flow into the rest of the house. And i got to move some things around. And we got to get painting. Got to get Peyton. So we'll be doing a live stream later on today from the workshop after I finish cutting all the stuff I need to cut. And we even have a new piece that we're working on. We've got the prototype in the works as we speak because you guys asked for it. We're going to give it to you. And that is a Joe Boo spice rack. So I will see you guys later on with any news that happens with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes. I hope you have a great day.